This is going to be a tutorial on rescaling and optimizing images for web design. Uh, what we will use is a free software, a wonderful free software called GIMP, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, and GNU means that it's free. Uh, and it's available for both Mac and Windows. And this is where you download it. It's pretty straightforward to download. Not going to waste your time showing you how I downloaded and installed. For me, it's already um, downloaded and installed. I'm using a Mac. Um, of course, there are better image manipulation software, but not free ones, such as, of course, Photoshop. But for our purposes, GIMP is going to be great and it's free. So I already have GIMP installed in my applications. I didn't create a, a shortcut for it yet, but here it is. And I'm launching it and it's already up. Um, the other thing that I want to show you is the image that I'm going to be using. So the image I'm going to be using was saved right here and I called it car one. And this image, if I preview it, looks pretty good, but it's 2.9 megabytes for one image or 2,900 kilobytes. As we said for many years in web design, a megabyte is a dirty word in web design. We try to keep everything in the range of a few dozen kilobytes, maybe hundreds of kilobytes, but definitely not megabytes, definitely not for one image. So this image is high res and huge. In other words, not usable yet for web design. As a matter of fact, I like to keep sometimes images like that in a folder called raw, just so I uh, don't mix them up with my regular images. Let me actually do that right now. I'm going to do a folder called raw and I'm going to move this image right into it so I know these are images that are not ready yet and I'm going to go to GIMP and file open it shows me you know my computer my recently used places and um, under here it's in my Google Drive, inside my Broward College, inside my, this is alphabetical, so web authoring one, 2021, raw, and here's this image. And when I'm about to open this image, it tells me that it's 2.9 megabytes, but also gives me its pixel size, which is huge huge, way bigger than I will ever need in web design. As, as we will discuss in class, what we want is the image to be no bigger or maybe 5-10% bigger than the biggest size we ever plan to use it, which usually is no more than a thousand pixels, you know, in its largest um, dimension. Uh, unless we plan on using it as a background for the whole page and even then it wouldn't be more than 1600 definitely not in the range of four thousands um so i open it i sometimes get this dialogue about keeping all kinds of embedded colors i just want to keep the image the way it is so i click keep no need to convert anything um if for some reason i forgot or didn't look at its original dimensions i can always go to image and go to image properties and it reminds me of its original size. Resolution is totally irrelevant for the web. Resolution is for printing. So all we look at is pixel size. Pixel size is the only thing that matters. And it's actual file size. And of course, it's format. In this case, it's already a JPEG, but a non-optimized one. I'm closing this. And in order to get this ready for the web, I'm going to perform two main steps, which is to scale it to the right pixel size and then export it with some more JPEG compression. To scale it to the right image size or to a more usable size, I go to the image menu and I go to scale image. It's very straightforward. A dialog shows up, shows me the original image size. As we said, this is irrelevant. I keep the lock on and I just look at which one, which number's bigger, 4,000. And I usually, unless it's meant to cover the whole page, I would go with something like a thousand and as soon as I click on the other number it recalculates it to be um, proportionate and as far as quality I'm going to use the one called no halo which is 
right now the highest quality of resampling and I'm going to click scale and at first it looks like oh my god it became so small but that's because we are zoomed 25 percent we see it only at quarter size the only way to really judge it is to watch it at a hundred percent size and it looks just like the original only this time this is the real size it will show up on my web page and I can also make it smaller but it'll never be bigger than that uh, if I know that I need it, gonna need it in much smaller size, I might as well even scale it to be smaller. Um, again, the rule is we scale images to be as big as we ever would want to see them on the page, maybe 10% bigger for safety, but not much bigger than that. A thousand by width and about 700 by height is pretty reasonable. The next step is actually to create a copy of this and while saving the copy, compressing the JPEG. We go to File, Export As. The first thing I will do is give it a different name. Instead of car1, I'll call it car1 underscore. And I have a method of just reminding myself what I did with it, and I call it 1000. It just reminds me that it's the same picture, only scaled to the, where the larger dimension is 1000. Now would also be a good time to uh, go to where I'm planning on saving it. Let's say I'm working on a website called uh, week two and I'm opening this and inside there's a folder called images and finally I can save it into the folder called images. Now, this file is already a JPEG, but if it wasn't a JPEG, I can always go to select by file type and open this little plus and it gives me all the right file types. It's if, an Im if it's an image, I will always save it as a JPEG image. Right now it's already a JPEG, so it defaulted by, you know, um, by default. Uh, as I click export, It'll give me a dialog that asks me how, by how much I want to compress it. Now, on Photoshop, it'll actually show you a preview so it can you know fine tune the number here we just have to go by let's call let's say uh conventions this is the original quality we don't need 98 percent jpeg goes from zero to 100 a quality of somewhere between 50 to 70 i would say average 60 is good for almost anything okay and finally we can click export Great. Before we close this, I want to show you something. If I go back and I open my original image and remind you that it's 2.9 megabytes. Another way of saying it, it's 2,900 or 2,900 kilobytes. If I go to what I exported from it, and here is car 1000, look at the difference. It's 72 kilobytes. It's about 2% of the size that it was. Instead of 2,900, it's only 72. And when I preview it, it looks just fine. That's the whole point of what we just did. Last but not least, when I go back to GIMP and I'm saying, you know, I'm done and I wanna close this image or quit GIMP, it's gonna give me a prompt. Do you wanna save your changes? And I know it's very tempting to say, yeah, I wanna save it. I'm not gonna save, I'm gonna discard my changes. That way I still have the original at 4,000. It will forget everything I did to it. I already exported a copy from it, but if I say discard changes and then quit GIMP, my original is unharmed. It's still high res, it could still look great for, you know, uh, printing and so on. From it, I can always reopen it and export more optimized ones.